Welcome to Banana Bread Trades. Here we talk about trading futures. Shit post on Discord, post dank memes. And most importantly, eat banana bread and make money. Welcome everyone to Banana Bread Trades. My name is Goose and welcome back to another episode of today's recap and tomorrow's trade plan. Whereas tomorrow's trade plan is kind of already in action. Sorry, I'm a little late here, but I did post on Twitter and in Discord what the plan was. And that was that it was the exact same as yesterday's trade plan of we want our pivot 53.33. And today was pretty intense. You know, we tried to sell off a couple times. There were some massive orders being thrown around. I mean, the time in sales was just nothing but solid bid all day and it was just getting absorbed 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 huge buyers coming in making zero progress <clears throat> excuse me so it was really a pretty tough day i mean it was a violent range we didn't sell off or really go extreme bid one way or the other so it, it was pretty tough and then right at close we got a bit of a turbo bid i mean we sold off a little bit in the afternoon then right at close we got a turbo bid right back up to our pivot of 53.33 and I said, hey, I wanna short Globex open because we are right here. We're right at this spot where we had, you know, our major pivot. We have all these levels here. We failed to break above today. You know, buyers tried all day, all day, all day. So we're at a great spot as far as, you know, a risk standpoint. So as soon as Globex open happened, I got short. And that's what we're chilling in right now. We're still sitting in a short. I'm short from 53.20 on ES. I just got a couple runners left. I took profit on the core at um, 10 points, so around 53.11. I got my, I took profit. And then um, on M and Q, I'm actually short from 18.945 as well. And I'm holding a short there with four off. And I'm just got a runner down to. Uh, our target of 18,750, which is pretty far down there, but I got one runner left. It's more of like a YOLO play runner, but I think that's really a reasonable target. But we'll go through all of this here. This is just kind of a summary of what's going on. And let's kind of hop right into, yes, at least what today's trades were and then how we got to where we are right now. So first things first, let's actually pop open uh, my trades from today if we go down here to the goose section in the accountability area I post all my trade plans <clears throat> and trades and recaps and everything in here as well so yesterday we talked about lean hogs a little bit too yesterday which ended up being an absolutely stellar play but on ES and in Q let's talk about that a little bit more ES and in Q so ES we had our pivot at 5333 and we had short targets of 52.75 and 52.50. Okay, and then on in Q, our pivot was 18.80. Our 18.880 was our pivot, and we kind of went up and down above our pivot today. It wasn't a super stellar spot um, to be in a trade. Um, so I think our pivot was a little bit wrong today on in Q, but we got a new pivot for in Q, and kind of a new plan for in Q. So um today's pivot i think i like a little bit more at least and it's already in play so that was our trade plan yesterday um and then what we ended up doing was overnight we talked about getting short on or playing the gap immediately right yesterday we talked about if globex gaps whatever side of the gap we are on that's the side we're going to play because we were right at that 53.33 pivot the globex opened we gap down immediately. I got short on M and Q. This is just basically because I was a little late on MES. I should have gotten short on ES, but I took the short on M and Q either way. I thought it was probably a little bit more reward to M and Q, which I mean there was. M and Q moved quite a bit more. So I mean I say M and Q, I'm copying this across 10 accounts as well. So um I took the short, got my core off around 25 points. And when I say core, I got the main bulk of my position here. I was short four contracts and I took off, uh, we were short four. I took off three contracts here um, at 25, 20, 25 points. 
And then I just held a runner to see if we would break down. We did not break down. It ended up coming back, getting break even, and then chopped around this area pretty much all day. Um, and then come morning time, then, you know, we get into the RTH session and then I start looking for a short on ES because we got stopped out on our NQ short, um, or not stopped out, but we got break even on our NQ short, our runner died. We did get a pump above 53.33 overnight. We didn't really break above. We just went up, tested it, kind of chopped around that area. This was at, as you can see, 3 a.m. at goose time. So I was asleep, and this seems to kind of be the happening theme lately of these really good setups happening at London Session when I'm asleep. So kind of a bummer on that. Missed that one completely. I don't set limits um, for Globex. My whole thing with trading ES, especially on these longer swings, is I want to trade the reclamation of a zone. So let's use this 53.33 as an example. I'm not going to short just because we get to 53.33. I'm going to short because 53.33 fails, right? So I want to be on the back side of the V. Like, let's assume there's a V here. I want to be on the back side of the V. Let me draw an example. So... I'm just going to use this real quick and bring my snipping tool over here. So let's say price here. We have a level at whatever level this is, right? We won't even draw a price, but let's say that price is coming down and then we're going to come test our level here. Okay. This is the level that I want to trade, but I want to see sellers try to sell below my level. And then if sellers fail to sell below my level, come back above my level and hold, then I want to get long. So I actually want to get in a trade right in here, right in this area. Um, I, want, I want to get long on the reclamation and hold of that zone. And then I know exactly where my stop needs to be. It needs to be below where sellers tried to push lower. This gives me a really defined risk. And then I can use leverage appropriately. You see me use different size contracts all the time. Usually I'm trading on ME or on micros just because that gives me a lot more leeway on using, you know, whatever size I want to use. You know, I can go from two micros all the way to 15 to 20 micros if I want to. It all really depends on how far are we going to wick past my zone and what's the risk on the trade. And that's like my short that I'm in right now. My risk is actually pretty high, so I took it pretty light leverage. I did short it with two minis in one of my larger accounts, but that account is already flat. Now I'm just holding my micro runners. And like I said, the risk was kind of high on those, so we shorted it pretty light. I only shorted that one with um, three micros, and then we're holding some runners on that. So that was our... Or that's at least why I don't set limits in Globex. Now let's talk about this trade I took today on ES. Globex or our regular trading hours opened. Okay, I waited. Regular trading hours opened, and we get a sell right off the bat, and I didn't take it. I kind of bitched out, not gonna lie. And I was like, okay, let's just wait here for the first thirty minutes of the trading session, um, and kind of see you know how things transpire. We get thirty minutes in. And here comes that 30 minute rotation. We did actually end up getting a buy up. Come up here to opening range. We tested opening range pretty aggressively. I honestly thought we were going to break through right there. We didn't break through. So there was no short for me there, which was a good thing because I would have ended up getting, you know, a break even on the short right here. And I definitely wouldn't have gotten my core off in time either. So ended up avoiding a scratch trade there. And then we bid back up and we bid back up. And this is where I was talking about, you know, on time and sales, the bid was really, really strong all day. And I mean, we were seeing some huge buying. If you go look at my Twitter or in Discord or even just hit replay, you can see massive buy orders hitting. So I was being pretty cautious on this short. I did end up finally getting short. We were failing to break above or back into this opening range. I kind of thought we were failing. So I got short light, just two contracts. And then we ended up wicking up in here and then some big sellers kicked right back in or the bid kind of evaporated as well. Whichever way you want to see it, we got some good selling and kind of what I talk about that reclamation of a level. So our level was tested. 
And then we started selling out of it. So it was like, okay, I want to be short. So I added pretty heavy into the short here. And then we waited. And, you know, our stop was above opening range high. I talked about that as well. I said that, you know, that's where our trade is invalidated at opening range high. So price ended up coming back up here, but didn't go to our stop. We were pretty nervous, though. I mean, this really, there was a lot of buying and a lot of absorption going on up here. It was nerve wracking. But then we finally ended up breaking down. I took profit at initial balance low, which was also the low of day. And then I held some runners. Um, I took a runner off at 5305. I was just front running our options volume level of 5300, which ended up holding. I mean, that, that level was pretty thick all day. So we knew that there was going to be some, you know, turbulence right there. So I got that runner off. And then our last runner that I wanted to hold to 5275, that one ended up just dying. I took it off before I even got break even because, as I was talking about, we went absolutely turbo bid into close. But that close closed right exactly where we wanted to to possibly take short, which we did in Globex. So that was my trades from today. And really that trade plan that we had at 53.33, that is still in play. That is the same trade plan that we had and it's still in play. And it's the same thing for NQ as well. The only difference on NQ is I moved our pivot to 18.920 which was the previous day POC. So let's flip over to that. So on NQ, previous day POC is at 18,920. I wanted to see that level fail. And if that level failed, then we feel good holding a runner on our short, which it did fail. It tried to hold. There's quite a bit of volume there. It failed at that point. Now we want to hold the short to 17, excuse me, 18,750. So that's why we're holding that short there. And I'll show you these trades that we're in right now, actually. So we're short here at um, 53.20 on MES. We just have two runners left. And then over here on NQ as well, we are short from 9.45. I did short, like I said, right at Globex open. We had a gap down, got short. Same thing, ES, gap down, got short. But that's also why I hit it light because we had a little bit of risk here. To the upside we're about 10 points from our pivot but we really like that short and i really liked this gap right here so i wanted to get that that short in right off the bat so we're holding those right now and like i said my target on es is i'll probably trim around 5300 and then hold runners to 5275 or maybe even 5250 if we flush through 5300 pretty quickly then i'll just start trailing one runner and then uh Hold our last runner to 52.75, 52.50 area. And then on NQ, I want our first target of um, 18.750. We got our core off here, so we're sitting pretty good on NQ. So I'm happy just uh, just chilling on that. And like I said, being copy traded is really nice. That's the one benefit of Apex here is you can have a lot of accounts, trade pretty light leverage. And things are okay. I like trading these, especially on these more volatile, you know, swing type moves. I like trading my Apex accounts a little bit more than my personal account. And then that allows me to be a little bit more free with my personal account as well as trading light leverage and looking for these much larger scale moves and trading those light, not feeling like I'm missing out on, you know, intra move moves. You know, I can hold, you know, my runners a little bit longer on that personal account. Excuse me. Okay, deep breath. Okay, so what are we looking at now? And that comes back to talking about our trade plan on ES here that we're in. Same thing with NQ. NQ, I'm expecting it to follow suit of ES here. Let's switch over to our 15-minute chart. And here we go. So we have our 53.33 level overnight. It wicked, failed. We're looking for shorts all day. We got into some shorts today. And then in Globex here, we immediately get short again. There's absolutely nothing below us right now. So that's another very important thing to keep in mind. The first level of real turbulence we're going to start seeing is 5282. 5284 to 5282 area. That is that untested POC all the way back from May 22nd, right? So last week sometime is our first level of turbulence. Then we have our 52.75 level, which was the CPI breakout level, as well as this low from this major liquidation move. 
So yeah, I would definitely expect some turbulence in this area. But in my opinion, if we're going to make our way down to this area again without swinging the highs here at all time high, that just means that we need to find buyers lower, right? We need to find a spot where buyers feel comfortable getting in heavy because obviously they weren't comfortable buying and holding long here. So really, I think our first level that we really, really want to see is 52.50, or at least our final target in this trade here is 52.50. That's where I want to see us go test. So that's what I'm trying to hold runners to, knowing that I'll probably take profit on a runner in this area right here and then holding our last runner down to 52.50. But also that's, you know, part of it. We want to protect profit along the way in case buyers come in out of nowhere. But that's what we're looking at right now. That's what we're trying to do. Um, I hope everything was kind of clear there. I know I kind of rambled quite a bit. This one went a little bit long, but there's kind of a lot going on. And this is one of those really nice trading setups that I love to see. And, you know, I'll also go here and show us a little bit here. Um, Where is it? Okay, right here. This other trade we took, it was the exact same setup as today was on April 29th. And you can go back and replay both days where we had massive volume. We had huge buying with buyers making zero progress. We had the attempt lower with the turbo bid at close. Turbo bid closed right at what our pivot was. And then the following day, we sold off into a massive liquidation move. And it was literally the exact same thing today that we saw on April 29th. And I remember this, these two days very specifically because we made a lot of money on them. And that's why we were so confident and why we are so confident in the shorts that we are right now because of, you know, we documented and watched all that price action unfold. And we know that as long as that pivot above is not reclaimed, then we should make this move down lower. So we know that 53.33 is our level of invalidation on the short. And our target, you know, on this move here is 52.50. That's that's where we're aiming for. We want to see this area break and get down to 52.50, but we'll we'll be taking profit along the way. So I hope this is helpful. Sorry, I kind of rambled a lot here today. Good day overall. It's late. I'm tired. Ready to go to bed, but also going to manage this trade for a little bit and maybe start trailing here or at least set some break evens here if we sell pretty hard so we'll be monitoring this i'll be in the discord i'll be on twitter you guys can message me hit me up in the comments whatever if you got any questions i hope all goes well for you be safe tomorrow don't get caught trying to fade this if it turns into a big move okay these big liquidation moves are pretty typical about going more than the daily average expected move. So don't get caught trying to fade it or catch a knife unless that shit is really clear. We do not V out of these. There will be some consolidation. Wait until the bottom is confirmed and then you can maybe start stabbing some longs. But don't try to bottom tick this shit. I swear to God, if I see one of you liquidated tomorrow because you said you were trying to catch the knife all day, I am going to absolutely lose my marbles. So please, stay safe. Have a great day. Be patient. Don't get liquidated. And most importantly, tell Rocky that you love him. He needs it. We all need it. Be nice to one each other, one another, and each other. Most Be nice to Hector, too. I know we give him a lot of shit. He's probably going through a lot. So be nice to one another. Tell Rocky you love him. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.
cover it in tin foil and leave Saturn room temperature overnight. The tin foil locks in the moisture so that when you cut into it, the next day you have a 